The people that made fun of me were the same people that later on were like, Maddie, let me be in your vlogs. Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Maddie. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I am all cozied up in my mom's bed. It is pouring outside so I'm going to apologize in advance for that noise. It's literally a torrential downpour and I'm kind of worried right now. So um, pray for my safety. There's like a ton of lightning and it's just kind of scary for my five-year-old self. So today I am going to be filming my high school experience video and I'm going to kind of be talking about the things that I went through in high school, how I coped with them, and honestly the best way to maximize your high school experience. So I had you guys ask me some questions on my Instagram. I did one of those question things that I do all the time. I'm very annoying on Instagram about my YouTube, but like, sorry, not sorry. So yeah, I'm just going to dive into the questions and kind of talk throughout the video about my high school experience. I know that a lot of my subscribers and viewers are currently in high school or going into high school. I figured what better way to kind of introduce you guys to my channel, introduce you guys to me, than to film a video that is all about my experience in high school. So I went to a small Christian private high school and I was there from junior kindergarten all through 12th grade. My school was junior kindergarten through 12th grade so I was there pretty much my entire life for like 14 years and it definitely shaped who I am and it gave me a very strong firm Christian foundation that I'm really proud to have and very thankful for. I'm so glad that my parents chose to send me to that school because without it I don't know who I would be. Without further ado I'm just gonna jump into the questions. I know I already said I was going to jump into the questions but I get so easily distracted and I feel like you guys kind of needed to know a preface that like I didn't go to a public school, I did go to a private Christian school. The first question is, what is some of your advice for rising freshmen? So freshman year, I'm not gonna lie, is kind of hard because most of the times you'll go into it, sometimes you're with the people that you were with in middle school, sometimes you're not, sometimes you're just switching schools, maybe you're moving. I don't know, there's different circumstances for different people. But yeah, you're going in and you're just the youngest one there, so it can be kind of scary at first. But as I've said recently, I did a Q&A recently and somebody asked a similar question, but my advice would honestly be to go into it and know that nobody hates you, the upperclassmen do not hate you. They did not haze me at my school. I'm really thankful to have gone to a school that was like a private Christian school where like for the most part people were pretty nice. The problem that I did face a lot in high school were fake people. And I feel like you can't really avoid that at any school that you go to. Like at every school, there are people who are mean and hateful and there are people that are going to be fake to you. I think it's kind of unavoidable because there are going to be fake people at every single environment or situation that you're in. And in high school, like at every high school, there are going to be fake people and there are going to be people who will be super nice to your face but super mean behind your back. And I wish that I had like a golden piece of advice to completely avoid it, but I really don't think that there's a way to avoid it. I think that when you hear something that somebody said about you, I think you just need to take it with a grain of salt and be like, they may have said this, they may have not said this, but looking forward, I'm going to like reevaluate my friendships and reevaluate who I trust. I feel like it's really hard to find people that you trust in high school because everybody's maturing and everybody's trying to figure out like if they're going to have really strong morals or if they're honestly not going to have strong morals. And for me, my morals are something that I hold near and dear to my heart. Saying that, I am not saying that I'm a perfect person and I have definitely fallen and made so many mistakes in my life. But I think that at this point in my life, moving forward, I am really grounded in my faith and really grounded in how I want to be viewed. So I try to shape the way that I'm viewed with my decisions that I make. And I try to keep God in the back of my head when I'm making decisions. So whether that be with alcohol, drugs, jeweling, vaping, whatever, I don't do any of those things. And that is my personal decision, but you are going to be faced with stuff like that in high school. And it's just a way of life because I did go to a private Christian high school where they had this thing called a 24 seven policy, where it was like, you could get in trouble for things that you did outside of school. And so I do know people who did get in trouble for those things and I know people that didn't get in trouble for those things and they just got away with it. I mention all of this to get the point across that you will be faced with difficult things in high school, even your freshman year, and it doesn't really matter which high school you go to, if it's a private school or a public school, these things are challenges that you'll face everywhere and it really doesn't matter where you're at. So you're going to have to stand firm in your morals and you're gonna to have to figure out whether you will make these decisions or you won't make these decisions and it really will shape the rest of your high school career and going forth into college. So 
Yeah, that was a very long drawn out response to that question, but I feel like I did give it a deep thoughtful answer. So I hope that in some way helps. This question says, what are ways to make friends? I go to a smaller school, so it's harder to make friends. Okay, so I went to a really small school too. In total, it was a little bit over a thousand students from junior kindergarten to 12th grade. So my biggest piece of advice would be to put yourself out there and make plans with people and try to be super outgoing. I know that that's not everybody's personality type. I've mentioned this before, but I'm like half introvert, half extrovert. I feel like I'm becoming more of an extrovert, honestly, through this YouTube channel because I've learned to like put myself out there and be like, this is me. It doesn't really matter if you like me or hate me, but like I like me. <laughs> so yeah, um, I would honestly just say make plans with people. Just be like, hey, do you want to go get lunch sometime? Hey, do you want to do this? It really does go a long way when you're the one asking people to do stuff. And I found that a lot of the friendships I've made were because I stepped out on a limb and I was like, hey, let's do this. Or they did the same to me and it really does go a long way. And people really do respect you when you do that. Also, if your school has Young Life, get involved in Young Life because you make great genuine friendships out of Young Life. And I've made so many great friendships with people in other grades and it's just awesome. So if your school does have Young Life, get involved in that. This question says, did you ever receive any hate for your YouTube channel yes I did so when I first started my YouTube channel I started it in like August or September of this past year so when I was going to be a senior and at first I did and it wasn't anything super mean I'm never gonna sit here and say I got bullied because that's a really harsh term and I know that people have experienced way worse bullying than I have. It was definitely not bullying. I just got kind of picked on. Like sometimes people would say things in class out loud and then other people would laugh and I'd just be like, that's awesome guys. Thank you so much for getting everybody to laugh at me. I love that so much. I feel like in any way, if you're putting yourself out there, you're giving other people the opportunity to make fun of you. And it's up to you to continue what you're doing regardless of what people have to say. That's a big life lesson that you're gonna learn at some point or another. It definitely does wear off as people start to realize like, no matter how much I make fun of her, she's still gonna continue to do it. Even if it does make you really upset, it really helps to act like you don't care because then they'll just realize that this isn't affecting you and there's nothing that they can say to make you stop doing what you are passionate about. This question says, what are some organization tips you have? This next question says, how do you deal with toxic friendships? I don't deal with toxic friendships. If somebody is taking me for granted or if somebody is taking advantage of me, then I just realize that they're not a friend to me. So there's no reason for me to be treating them like a friend. What was your most challenging year of high school and why? My most challenging year of high school was honestly senior year. I know that a lot of people say that junior year is the most challenging. And for me, it was definitely my senior year, probably because I took the hardest classes my senior year. Don't know why, like that was a very stupid decision on my part. But yeah, senior year, I did take AP Euro, which kicked my butt and I regret it. Yeah, senior year was probably my hardest because of the workload that I put on myself. But I think at other schools, it's kind of supposed to be your junior year because that's the year that really matters to colleges. So I'm glad that I didn't have as difficult of a junior year because my grades were better in my junior year. This question says, are school events worth it? And 100% school events are worth it. I was on student government at my school. We had the prefect system. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that. It's kind of where you have eight student government leaders, each for a different branch of the school. So I was the fine arts prefect and I did get to take part in the planning of some fine arts events. And I also got to help set up and tear down for school dances. And that was my favorite part about it. But yeah, school dances, um, like prom, homecoming, those things are totally worth it. And I think that you should definitely go to those events, but also know if you are a girl and you're stressing out about dances already, do not stress out. It is not worth it. You do not have to have a date. It is honestly so much more fun to go with a group of your friends. It takes a lot of the pressure off of the whole dance situation. So it's not as big of a deal as you think it is. Do not lose sleep over school dances, but definitely get involved in as many high school events as you can because that was the best part of my high school experience. And go to as many games as you can. Go to all the football, baseball, basketball games. They're, oh my gosh, they are so much fun. Do that for sure. How do you deal with stress? I honestly Honestly, had my fair share of mental breakdowns. Oh, so much fun. But in all seriousness, my best way to deal with stress was to go to coffee shops. I would honestly switch it up and go to a bunch of different coffee shops. And I felt like the coffee shop environment was very stress relieving to me. I would get my cup of coffee and I'd sit there and do my homework for hours on Sundays 
or Saturdays or whichever day works best for you. Sometimes I would go after school and it really did help me de-stress and I also had a planner like a physical planner because I know sometimes like writing your homework down on your phone or just relying on like the computer software like Canvas or whatever. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Canvas, but it's how our teachers would give us our assignments. But yeah, sometimes not all of the assignments would be on Canvas. I would recommend writing all your assignments out in a planner and also de-stressing by going to coffee shops. And also know that you do not have to be perfect and failing one test or one quiz will not determine your future. And I have failed so many things in my life and I'm here to tell you that you will be okay and it really does not determine a lot. So you're gonna be just fine. Any advice for seniors? Soak it all in and have so much fun. Um, senior year, although for me it was super hard, I try to be involved in as many things as possible, whether that means going to all the dances or as many athletic events as I could. I really try to soak it in because you are going to miss it. I'm about to be going to college in like 25 days, which is insane. Go Flames, I'm going to Liberty University for those of you who don't know that. But um, yeah, soak it all in and enjoy your friends and know that this is the last time that you guys are all going to be together. So yeah, it's very depressing, but have as much fun as you can. I love this question, but it says, how do you find your tribe in high school when you never really had one in middle school? Since I went to such a small school, it was kind of easy, but also kind of hard at the same time to find the people that I wanted to have consistently in my life as a graduated senior. I can confidently say that the friends that I have in my life are the friends that I want at my wedding and the friends that I want to stay in my life. And I hope and I pray that we stay in contact when we go to college. The best way that you can find your people is to be yourself and honestly pray for it. If you pray to God and you say, God, please fill my life with people who strengthen me and who lead me closer to you, then he will put girls and guys in your life that really do shine the light of Christ. Um, but also I will say that it's not the end of the world if you don't find those people. I am well aware that my high school experience was very rare. I'm blessed to have gone to the school that I did go to and have the amazing friends that I have. But I do want to encourage you that if you don't find those lifelong best friends, you will find them in college and you will be blessed with so many amazing people at different points in your life. And it's okay if you don't have a perfect girl gang in high school. This question says, how would you deal with staying strong in your faith while your friend group doubts you. So I can't even imagine how hard this is. I just want to encourage you first and foremost that this is a super hard experience and you are already so strong and I cannot imagine what this must feel like because my friends were all Christians and I never struggled with this specifically but I would definitely say pray for them and pray that the Lord gives them clarity and know that your faith does not have to be everyone else's faith. You can have amazing friendships with people who don't necessarily share the same beliefs as you do. And I would say that don't let what other people think affect your faith because your faith is your own girl and you don't need to change it or alter it for anybody else. How did you keep your faith through tempting high school situations? I just wanna start this off by saying you are such a beautiful light and I'm really proud of you for reaching for the Lord and seeking to please him. But my way of coping with hard situations was to try to keep God in the center of all my thoughts and all my decisions. I would first think to myself, is this pleasing to the Lord and would God be proud of me for doing this? If the answer is no, then just don't do it. And I know that's way easier said than done. I think that praying for strength is a great way to deal with those hard situations. Honestly, pray to God and be like, God, please give me the strength to deal with these situations that are really making me struggle and tempting me and pressuring me to fall. I also want you to know that the peer pressure that you're experiencing is not worth listening to. And life with Christ is so much more fulfilling than any of these experiences. I literally 100% promise you. But I also wanna let you know that even if you've made decisions that you regret, God still loves you and he will never stop loving you. And I think that's one thing that I am so thankful for every day is just the forgiveness of Christ. Because even when I can't forgive myself, he is ready to forgive us. And I just wanna encourage you with that, with knowing that you can always start fresh and you can always begin anew. This question says, how do you get boys to like you? I literally have no idea. This question says, what did you get on the ACT? Also, how do you make all of these important stressful decisions? Okay, so I did not take the ACT, I only took the SAT, and I don't really wanna like specifically say my score just because I'm a horrible test taker and I'm not incredibly academically talented or academically inclined. Take that how you may. I did get involved in a lot of things in high school and I think that 
that's one of the reasons why I did get accepted into all four of my schools that I applied to. I've said them in previous videos, but I will say them again. I only applied to four Christian schools because my dream is to be a missionary and I think a Christian education should be a big part of where I go to college. So I applied to obviously Liberty University, Stanford University, Anderson University, and Belmont University. And I got into all four of them and I did get scholarships to pretty much all four of them. So my biggest piece of advice would be to get involved in as many things in high school as you could. I was in choir. I had pretty much all A's and B's throughout high school. I also was in the Bible Conservatory. Um, I was in a few clubs. I was on student government. So yeah, that's probably one of my biggest tips for college applications also. Coming from a girl who didn't have the best test scores, trying to be involved in as many things as possible is a great way to get accepted and get scholarships from a lot of schools. So definitely know that your test scores are not the most important thing. Those are all of the questions that I have time to answer today, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I had so much fun filming it and I love filming Q&A videos because they're so chill and I get to kind of talk with you guys, fill you guys in on my life and kind of give you guys more of a personal glimpse into who I am rather than just on the vlogs where I'm like, hey guys, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> so my next video will be up on Sunday and make sure to like and subscribe, comment on this video, let me know any of your other videos that you guys would like to see. Also make sure to follow me on all my social medias, they are always listed down below. But yeah, I will see you guys on Sunday with another new video. Bye!